Python is one of the best programmer languages that you can learn today, and it's really not that hard to pick up either. A good understanding of how the language works will not only help you turn your ideas into a reality, but will make learning other languages such as Java and C Sharp so much easier. This guide will teach you how to get started with Python, how programming languages work, and how to improve your understanding with the process of software engineering. There are so many ways to go about learning Python, but I'll be aiming to make sure that this guide is as easy to follow as possible, it leaves no unanswered questions, I go as in-depth as I can to really make sure that you understand everything, and that you have a good time doing it. But before we even think about programming, we're going to have to get a few things ready. The first of these things is going to be our Integrated Development Environment, also known as our IDE. It sounds a bit complicated, but all the IDE is, is the place where we write, run and test our code. Now there are loads of IDEs out there and some are better than others. You can get PyCharm, you can get Atom, you can get Idle, but for this tutorial guide we're going to be using a Visual Studio Code. The reason that we're using this IDE over any of the others that I just listed is because it's the one that I'm most comfortable with, it offers a lot of personalization, and all the other IDEs are either too heavy or too simplistic. So in my opinion this is just the best IDE to start with, you can choose your own, but this will be the one that we're doing for this tutorial. The download link will be in the description, you can get this on Mac or Windows, I'm going to be using my Mac for this tutorial. Installing is fairly straightforward, all you have to do is press the download button and then go and install the software accordingly. After you've finished fully installing Visual Studio Code, I want you to go ahead and open it, and after you've closed all of the welcome app things that will be there, you should be met with something like this. So that's great, we can now tick our IDE off our checklist, but before we do any programming, there is still one more thing that we need to install. And that one thing is the interpreter. A programming interpreter works the exact same way as a real life interpreter does. If I was speaking to you in Russian and you were speaking English, you would need a middleman who speaks Russian to listen to what I am saying and then repeat it back to you so you know what I'm trying to tell you. That's exactly how it works in this circumstance. The interpreter is the middleman between you and your IDE. Now if you've got something like Idol or um, PyCharm, you won't need to do this because those IDEs are specifically made for Python, whereas in Visual Studio Code you can do many different uh, programming languages inside of it. To download the Python interpreter for Visual Studio Code, all you have to do is press this button here and search Python in the search bar and download the first one that you see. And once you've done that, hold down Ctrl N or Command N if you're on Mac and you'll open up your very first empty script. The reason we put .py there is because this is now a Python file, obviously the PY stands for Python. So this should automatically be set to the Python interpreter. For you, it might have said plain text down here where it now says Python. And if it doesn't, all you have to do is click on it, search for your Python interpreter, press enter and you're all good. We now have everything on our checklist ticked off. We have both an IDE and a Python interpreter. We're gonna be using Python 3.8.1 for this tutorial, it doesn't really matter what version of Python you're using exactly, as long as it's 3.7 or later or 3.4 or later more like. So let's take a second just to get used to our IDE so we're familiar with our surroundings. Down here we've got this nice little control panel that we can use. I usually just have mine on this so I can have a bunch of my files open in the same directory and I can really quickly just switch between them if I want to. Across here is where all of your open projects will be stored on tabs so you can go to and fro if you want and it's really easy just to press this little X to close them if you want to just like you're using your web browser. And when you try and run and debug your code down here in the terminal is where it's going to run. Over here is where we can try and run our code, as you can see, run Python file in terminal, although you can also just press F5 and that will run the code the same. And if you ever find yourself in a situation where you've got two or more projects open and you're kind of going between them very quickly, you can press this button and you can have two files open at once. In this instance, all it's going to do is mirror the one on each side. We don't need that for now, so I'm just going to get rid of it. And this whole workspace is where we're going to be writing our Python code. So let's do a quick demonstration of how some code would run. So if I wanted to print uh, the words hello world, and by the way, this I will cover actual like Python programming in the next episode, um, but print basically just means to display whatever is inside of those brackets to, uh, to the terminal or to the console if you like. So this will write the words hello world with an exclamation mark down here in the terminal. So to run this, all we have to do is press this green button like we said. It may take a second and there you can see hello world. You can do it again if you want 
they will run the exact same. And we can actually use terminal commands inside here, so if we want to clear it, we can just type clear and it will get rid of everything. We can add another line if we want, so on line two, we can add another print statement to say, I am learning the basics of Python. And then we can run that and it will say, hello world, I am learning the basics of Python. Now these two print statements here that I just wrote, they only exist so I could show you how to run a Python script and show you all of this in action. So sure, if you wanted to, we could just delete everything, but I'm not going to do that. You see, what we're seeing here is called executable code. In other words, as soon as the IDE and the interpreter see these lines of code, it runs them, it, it executes them. You'll see down here, if I write a uh, print test and then run the script, it will print hello world. I'm learning the basics of Python and test. However, if I put just one hashtag in front of that print statement there, you'll see it will only say, hello, I am learning the basics of Python. It, it won't say that test bit. The reason why is because we have made this non-executable. This is a process called commenting out. Effectively, what we've done here is comment out using the hashtag, that third print statement that's supposed to say test. And that's told the IDE that, hey, we're not trying to run that line of code. Do not execute that. As far as the IDE is concerned, that line of code does not even exist. So using that, what we can do is go to the start of all of these uh, print statements and add two hashtags in front of them. So now if we try and run our scripts, it might uh, be a bit more clear if I clear out the terminal, you'll see that nothing will happen. That's because there is no executable code for this script to run. Now, programmers use this, yes, to comment out uh, lines and stuff that they don't, they don't want to be executed. However, your most common use for them will probably be to put a comment beside it. Uh, so for example, if I'm working on a, a group project or if I, there's something I really need to remember, um, I can add a comment next to this and I can say, uh, hey, don't delete this line of code. And you'll see when I run it, all it will say is hello world in the bottom. It won't do anything to that text, hey, don't delete this line of code. And if I get rid of that hashtag, the, uh, the IDE is now going to try and read, hey, don't delete this line of code as executable code, which obviously it's not going to be able to do because that's just plain text. That's not Python code. So if we run this, you'll see we'll get a syntax error. And don't worry, we'll be going over all of the types of errors and exactly what a syntax error means and what is a syntax, all in the future episodes of this tutorial series. For now, I just wanted to show you what commenting out is, and I wanted to, uh, to comment out this entire region of code. So that's going to be it for this episode of the tutorial. All I wanted to do was make sure that we have our IDE, we have our interpreter, and you're familiar with your IDE, and we've even learned a little, little, little bit of Python, um, and I've told you about commenting things out. So now that we have all the resources we need to actually get programming, the next few episodes is going to be actually learning the programming language of Python, and we're going to develop towards not only building our own project, but I'm going to be giving you the tools that you need to make your own project. Whatever you can think of is possible. But anyway, that's about it. If you did enjoy this video, please uh, subscribe for the future episodes and leave a like. There will be a playlist of all the episodes of this Python series as soon as I've made them all. These videos are very difficult for me to make because the editing is kind of... It, it takes a while to edit these sorts of videos, so please help me out as much as you can. All the links for everything that you need will be in the description below. Thanks for watching, have a nice day, and I'll see you later.